Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we'll talk about curvature of vector valued functions, explain what curvature is, how to find it, and we'll work some examples with you as well. For a vector valued function, the curvature is a measure of how much its direction is changing with respect to arc length. For some vector valued functions, curvature will be a constant, but for many of them, the curvature will change depending on where we are on the curve in space. A couple types of vector valued functions with constant curvature. Lines have constant curvature zero. Since a line as a vector valued function is always traveling in the same direction through space, its tangent vector will always point in the same direction. So no unit tangent change, no curvature. Circles are also a path with constant curvature. If we travel one full rotation on the circle, no matter where we start, the unit tangent direction will change 2 pi going all the way around and the arc length we'll have travel would be the circumference, 2 pi r. The reason that this curvature for a circle is constant, though, is that if we think about driving a car along the circle in order to stay on the circle, we would have the steering wheel turned the exact same amount in the exact same direction the whole time. In general, for vector-valued functions, our formula for curvature is based on this magnitude of change of the unit tangent with respect to arc length. So this formula here you can see is comparing the magnitude of t hat prime to the magnitude of r prime. We often see curvature abbreviated with a curly k or kappa symbol in math from the Greek. Now these quantities magnitude of t hat prime and magnitude of r prime are also involved in the process of finding unit tangent and principal unit normal vectors. So you might be in a situation where we're asked for all three of these together. We're going to go ahead and go back to an example where we already worked out our unit tangent and principal unit normal vectors in our previous video in this series. You can find the link to the video of that work in the description below. So we're going to go ahead and import all the work we already did in the previous video. You can see we found first r prime of t, we then found the magnitude of r prime in that video. After that, we took r prime and divided it by its magnitude. We got the unit tangent in that video. Then working on finding the principal unit normal, we found t hat prime. We got that vector and then we found the magnitude of t hat prime as well. So here you can see we have two magnitudes and we want to remember that curvature now is going to be the magnitude of t hat prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. Remember the magnitude of t hat prime is not guaranteed to be 1. The magnitude of t hat is, but not t hat prime. So in this case, if we've already worked through some steps to find our unit tangent vector and principal unit normal vector, we're taking basically the last magnitude that we found in all of that work, our fifth step here in my list, and we divide it by the first magnitude that we found in our list here it would be basically step two in my list. So in other words, I'm taking 3 over root 10 and I'm dividing it by the magnitude of r prime of t, which is root 10. We can think of that as 3 over root 10 times 1 over root 10. And in this case, that gives us a curvature of 3 over 10 or this helix where we found the unit tangent and principal unit normal in our other video. Again, for the work of that, just check out the video at the link below. We'll work through an entirely new problem with you here though. We want to find the curvature for the vector valued function t cosine of t minus sine t, comma t sine of t plus cosine of t, comma one. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll find our r prime of t. We'll need that to get the magnitude of it. Now here we'll have some product rules. We've got a product rule here and we've got a product rule here as well. So just be careful with those. So the derivative of t cosine t is going to be the derivative of t leaving cosine of t alone plus t times the derivative of cosine t, which is negative sine t minus sine t. The derivative of that is going to be minus cosine t comma, same thing here, product rule. So derivative of t would be one. We'll leave the sine of t alone. Plus, now leaving the t alone, the derivative of sine t is cosine of t. The derivative of positive cosine t here would be negative sine t. And the derivative of one, the last component, is going to be zero there. 
So we've got our r prime of t here. You might notice there are some things that we can clean up a bit. This is cosine of t minus cosine of t. That's really zero there. So here we actually get negative t sine of t just for this first component. Next component, you'll notice we have a sine t minus sine t there as well. So we really just get t cosine of t for the second one, comma zero. So that's a little bit nicer simplifying along the way. So the next step then will be to find the magnitude of this r prime of t. The magnitude of this, remember, will be the square root of all of these things squared. So if we square this, we'll actually get positive t squared sine squared t. Plus, if we square this one, we'll get t squared cosine squared t plus zero squared, technically. So now here, this is really t squared times a Pythagorean identity, right? If you factor out t squared, you get t squared times one. We get the square root of t squared. And we'll make a note here, technically this would be the absolute value of t, not just t. Um, if t is negative, then we might have some issues. So let's just assume that we're not allowing t to be negative, and then we can go ahead and say that this is just t. Maybe we'll put a little star there just so we remember that we did that or something. So that is our magnitude there. If we were allowing t to be negative, then of course we might need the absolute value of t. So now if we do our unit tangent vector, our t hat, we'll just be taking r prime divided by its magnitude, right? So r prime divided by the magnitude of r prime. And so if we divide by t here, that's just going to take the t's off. And so we'll end up with negative sine t cosine of t. 0 divided by t would still be 0. So that's our unit tangent vector, right? So then the next thing we did was we found the principal unit normal vector. We don't have to go quite that far because we're just looking for the curvature. But we do need t hat prime, so that's the next thing we'll do. We'll find t hat prime. And the derivative here is nice and easy, so we'll actually get negative cosine of t. We'll get negative sine of t. The derivative of 0 will still be 0. So that's our t hat prime. The next thing we need then is our magnitude of t hat prime. So magnitude of t hat prime. This one, it turns out, is going to be pretty easy here. So we actually get a positive cosine squared t. If we square the first component. If we square the second component, we get a positive sine squared t. Plus 0 squared wouldn't change anything. This, of course, Pythagorean identity under here is 1. So the square root of 1, we just get 1. It actually turns out this is a unit vector, if you hadn't spotted it already. And so our curvature here is going to be, remember that is the magnitude of t hat prime. In this case, we did actually get a unit vector for t hat prime. That won't always happen. Divided by the magnitude of r prime. And so here we actually just get 1 over the other magnitude we found, which was t. And if we were, of course, we put a little star here, if we were allowing t to be negative, it might be 1 over the absolute value of t. All right, so there's your example for finding curvature. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.